All right. I'm here to do somewhat of a wrap-up UFC 207 video, somewhat a UFC 2016 kind of review. Not in full. I'm not going to do like an awards things or really talk about a lot of things. I mean, for example, see back on my other videos for thoughts on various things. This is going to kind of very general, very unspecific, except where specifics are kind of needed as an example. So we had UFC 207. Um, not a great card. Uh, I mean, look at it, top to bottom, some good fights, but not, uh, some, some real downers. Neil Magny versus Johnny Hendricks was uh, not a good fight. Uh, somewhat controversial, a lot of people feeling that Hendricks won. I would disagree, because the, the argument for Hendricks winning is kind of the old school adage of, you win because you're on top. Um, I mean, realistically, he got outstruck. He got out grappled. Uh, for the most part, I mean, he had control, but caught in uh, a couple of deep triangles. Uh, Magni really was the more active fighter on the ground, driving it in that regard. So I think to say that you're really solidly going to be doing things. Um, if you want to go back to the, the top guy winning all the time, I think that's a mistake. I think that, just, that encourages stagnation. And uh, uh, it's not a good thing. Um, Safadine versus Dong Hyun Kim, that was also a very disappointing fight. Um, I, I did think that Safadine won, despite having picked DHK. Um, I don't necessarily have a problem with the victory, just because Safadine really should, at this point, have learned a little bit more about um, kind of turning the tide against um, opponents who try to do what DHK did, and he hasn't, and that's kind of disappointing. At the same time, probably, you know, did deserve to win this fight. Um, those were probably the two most negative fights in the card. Uh, on the kind of neither category, because there was a good side and a bad side to it, Nico Price looked pretty good, but Brandon Thatch lost really, again, to uh, effectively the same thing he keeps losing to. Um... And it's kind of a shame because, you know, he's at a good fight team and he can't seem to put it together and he has a lot of natural physical tools. And it's just kind of a, a prospect that um, couldn't process the game at a high level, I think is what we're looking at there. Um, we had a great performance by Cody Garbrandt. Um, some of it, I think, was Dominic Cruz uh, abandoning some of his wrestling after the second round, um, doing some things wrong that maybe he could fix in a rematch. But... I thought Garbrandt wasn't quite ready for Cruz, and I'm left with the feeling that I was wrong on that. He he was ready. Um, he's at, he's further ahead in his development than I think uh, most people thought he was. Uh, congratulations to the Garbrandt fans who saw that and uh, and and rode with it. And he's your new bantamweight champion. Um, an immediate rematch is not something I would approve of because I think T.J. Dillashaw has earned a shot. So I think the fight to make is Garbrandt Dillashaw. However. We're going to get to this in, uh, in more detail a little bit later. The UFC right now is all about big money fights, so if they think that Cruz Garbrandt 2 is the big money fight, it's where they will go. And I can't necessarily blame them with the situation that their finances are in. Moving on to the main event, the thing that, you know, let's be re let's be honest here, this is what we were here to, to watch with this fight card. And, I mean, that's normally the case with the main event, so that's not anything groundbreaking, but particularly in this case, it was, what does Ronda Rousey look like right now? And the answer was a uh, pretty damn bad. Um, there are two avenues we can go down here. Number one is, if Ronda doesn't want to fight anymore, there's no reason that she will. Um, she has... As much as, like, the, the, really, the really big money deals have kind of dropped, have kind of... Uh, followed apart for her in terms of movies. Um, the Roadhouse Project, for example, a couple of things. Like, her, her days as, like, a Hollywood star, I think, are, are largely dumb, but I think she's made a fair amount of money in the meantime. She can do some things with teaching judo if she wants. She still can have some endorsement deals. She can probably still have some bit parts. I mean, Gina Carano's career kind of went the same direction with... Uh, uh, with not really panning out as a star with movies like Haywire and uh, that movie where she was in, I think it was Brazil and her husband, fiance, whatever it gets, it gets taken. Um, 
can't remember. I can't remember the name of the, the name of the movie. Bad. Um, our examples of like her starring roles kind of drawing up, but she still got into Deadpool. She got a, a bit part in Fast and Furious, much like Rhonda did. Um, you know, she can still do things of that nature. Um, so she does not need to fight. But option number two is if she does want to fight, change is absolutely required because the the problem is is that we saw when Holm beat her and then went on to lose to Tate and pretty convincingly to Shevchenko that you don't necessarily need a great fighter to beat Ronda. And I think unfortunately for an Amanda Nunez, like all the problems I had, like things that could be exploited with Amanda Nunez are still 100% there. Um, I still, you know, question the cardio. I still... I still question her ability to fight fighters that are going to make her fight in multiple dimensions. I still question, like, all the questions are still 100% there. And, and unfortunately, beating Rousey by any means was probably not going to ever fix any of those questions. And, you know, that was for another day. This fight was about the questions about Rousey. But... You know, it indicates that change is needed. It's not like it's not like she's run up against like some super fighters that have like really changed how we perceive women's MMA and MMA in general. Um, neither Holm nor Nunez do that. Excuse me, go to a dry mouth. Um, she needs to change some things, and primarily she needs to get away from the Glendale Fight Club. Um, Edward Charvidian's operation there. I mean. Every fighter that has gone there, largely they've gone there because of the success with Rousey to a certain extent, but we tend to forget that Rousey was having a lot of success pre-Glendale. It's not like Glendale made her. Um, people have gone there and have largely had their careers go massively downhill. Um, for examples, look no further than Travis Brown, who went there and and it's 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 been terrible. He's he's looked absolutely terrible since going there. Um, Jake Ellenberger is kind of an example of a guy who. Went there, went on a big losing streak, left, uh, went to Kings. Grant has not been like a tremendous career resistance. I mean, he had the weird thing with Masvidal recently, but, you know, went over Matt Brown. Um, I thought looked like he was starting to mount some, some level, of level of effective offense against Masvidal. Still absolutely, still absolutely losing. losing. But, but showing, 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 things, that showing things that he still like didn't Glendale. show at Glendale. And... and as a result, as a result like, she has, like she has to get away from there. She has to get, to, has to, to, get to a good camp that's, that's going to help her emotionally, emotionally, mentally, mentally, and train her, train her how, to how to implement skills within, within the confines of MMA. Of MMA because I think while Tarvidian, while Tarvidian is possibly not, possibly not a terrible boxing, boxing coach, he is a boxing, he is a boxing coach. coach. I don't think he. I don't think he realizes how to implement boxing into, into MMA. MMA. I don't think he realizes the differences. I don't think he knows how he knows how to handle the other things that you see other than boxing. And, and I don't, I don't think he, <laughs> I also think he's probably in some point to go to jail with the way he manages his finances, either for bankruptcy, either for bankruptcy fraud, or fraud or tax evasion, tax evasion or something. something. Um, so we'll see, how, we'll that see how that goes, but I mean, getting away, I mean, getting away from there, if she is to, if she is to continue Paramount, Paramount, she needs to get to, she needs to, get to a camp that's, camp that's, that's going to help, that's gonna help her develop her career. Or um, do the Brock Lesnar thing and kind of establish your your own camp that's very catered to your needs. Um, although I think, much like Lesnar, I think you need someone advising you as to what those needs are, and not just what you think they are. So there's that. But that's it for that fight card. Going forward, the good things about you uh, about 2016 for the UFC were there were some fantastic fights this year from uh, Duhoy Choi to Cub Swanson being like the most recent example. Condit Lawler, um, a lot of fantastic stuff. We've had the the wave of Conor McGregor this year, which has brought interest in the sport to uh, an all-time high, um, to the point where it can sell massive pay-per-view numbers. And we've had, you know, it, the, the business is sold for $4 billion. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing where MMA had, or where the UFC specifically, and MMA to a lesser extent even, has gotten to. We've actually, we have somewhat viable options in WSOF and, and Bellator. Um, we have the rise of, of Risen, uh, really, throughout this year to bring some international MMA to the table. Uh, KSW had a fantastic year. So there's a lot of positives to 2016. 
There are, however, I think, some negatives. I think they, they devolve into the three categories. Number one is, with the financing of the loan that allowed for a $4 billion purchase of the UFC, we're seeing the UFC put an emphasis on big money fights, big money fights, big money fights, big money now. I'm not saying big money fights are a bad thing. They're not. They're big money for a reason. They generate interest. They generate profit. These are good things. But it's being done to the point of limiting long-term potential. I'll give you an example. Conor McGregor becoming the featherweight champion and then never defending his belt because of big money fights. Again, it's not the big money fights that are the problem. It's the fact that because of how that ha how that played out, the featherweight division's title is honestly meaningless. Jose Aldo holds basically a cardboard belt. It's not even, uh, it's not, it's, I, to say that it's, I, I think honestly at this point it would be, it would be a disregard to call it a paper championship. Like it's below that. Um, not to say that there wasn't a way to handle it. There, there probably was, but the way it was handled was never going to work because it's like a, it's like I said at the time when someone asked, could the UFC strip Conor McGregor? Of course they could. It's their belt. They can strip any champion. Any champion they want. They want. And in fact, and in fact, a major that's a major problem with the promotion, with the promotion is that there's no real criteria for, for when you're going to be when you're going to be stripped, how and how active you can be, what you can do, what you can do while you're the champion while keeping the belt. Um, um, and people have pointed, people have pointed out, out, and I think they, they were poor examples example because all the all the examples they had of guys not the defending the title were due to not not personal choice, choice whereas with Connor it was, but still, but still Connor was, was stripped quicker than, than a number of, number of other champions that Connor fans listed, listed out as guys who, as guys who had had their had their title belts kept longer longer while not defending it normally due to injury, but again again you know the the fact was still there. So there, there's so there, there's problems that, with that, but what I mean is the what I mean is the featherweight division has become completely, completely un, frankly, un frankly, frankly unmarketable. Um, um, I mean there was no I mean there was no in interest in Holloway versus Pettis despite, despite it being fight. a great fight on paper on paper and, 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 and in actuality it was a good fight uh, because they put uh, because they put a title on because the, the belt had no meaning all those belts has no meaning Holloway's belt has no meaning the division the division it's hard it's hard to see how that division recovers. Um, and, lightweight um, and lightweight could end up in the same deal, deal if Connor goes up to 170 and continues to chase big money fights, fights like fighting champion and champion. champion, champion. Um, um, I think, I think lightweight's in a better spot because, it, because it, it, uh, admittedly Connor didn't clean up the division. Not, 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 not that he cleaned out featherweight. I think that's something. Something I think people. Uh, really, oversold, really oversold was this idea that he had cleaned out the division, but I mean, he had beaten Aldo, which was a major win. win. He did have a win over Mendez, even if it was somewhat some bizarre, somewhat some bizarre to, uh, to it, just, uh, to it, just because the late notice replacement, which went both ways. Which went both ways. I mean, I'm not even trying to devalue that win. I'm just saying, just saying that there, there were some, there were some, some, some odd variables to that particular situation. That particular situation. Um, which leads, which leads to, to the damaging of the division. Um, um, lightweight at least lightweight has, at least has like, like, you could do, like, you could do an interim, could do an interim belt, belt, belt at lightweight and possibly still attract interest. You, you, you could do Tony Ferguson have and have that be, and have that be a thing. thing. Um, um, but it does, but it does point out the negativity that you have ruined a division, ruined a division and another ruin another division. Um, um, there's problems with Walter White too, with Woodley not wanting to fight people unless it's a big money fight. You are having some problems in this regard at middleweight, at middleweight with, uh, Michael with uh, Michael Bisping's tour of you know fighting Gay you know fighting Gay Henderson and then fight, wanting to fight like a number of other people that weren't the, the number one contender, etc. The, the you know in, in, pursuit, in pursuit of big money. Um, um, again, no real, with no real long-term net. Long -term net. To, be clear, to be clear, this is not me trying to throw on, on, on any of those fighters, fighters I mentioned. Because a fighter, a fighter should, want to, should want to make as much money as possible. They, they don't, don't care about the long-term of the sport because, as Dana, as has, Dana has quoted, this is not a this long-term long -term long -term career. career. So why would you so think, long -term, think long-term in, in that regard? You want to make as much money now as you can. So this is not a fighter problem, but it's a promotion problem for allowing it to happen and not encouraging people to kind of stick within the... Rubric the rubric of the traditional, of the traditional MMA, MMA combat sports, combat sports matchmaking system. system. To, a, a, certain to a, extent, a certain extent, you can always go outside of it and make super and fights make and make money, money, but there's a reason, there's that, a reason structure that structure is in place and it has to be to a level maintained, which we're not doing. A second thing, a second thing that, that I think really is kind of really kind of negative is um, the UFC's the current, UFC's current model. promotional model. If you uh, if like, you like, like looking at these last two cards is a great example. Uh, Ronda Rousey, Ronda Rousey versus, versus Amanda Nunes. Nunes is the champion, Nunes is the champion yet 
got, I'm going to say, like, 1% of the promo time, maybe. maybe. And, 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 and her, what, what promo time she got was... was how this links, how this links to Ronda Rousey, 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 kind of like the journey of how chaotic, how chaotic the division has been without Ronda. Ronda. What's next? What's for next Ronda? for Ronda? And can she reestablish dominance? dominance and like I say, the vision sort of thing. Sort of thing. A little bit of hyperbole, little bit of hyperbole there, but, there, but at the same time, at the same time, again, you know, again, it, even what she got, even what she got wasn't, wasn't about, about her. her. So of course, so of course now that she's now that won, she's won, you know, you know, she's not, she's not. She's a she's bigger a star bigger than star she than came she in, came but, in, the, but effect the effect is somewhat limited. limited. And it's, and it's kind of weird because there's some things there, there with Amanda News that you can do with things with. She's not going to be as big a star as Ronda Rousey. Ronda Rousey. Uh, just, that's not, that's in not in the cards, but you, you do have your first openly lesbian champion. You do have a rags to riches story. She grew up very poor and has really come a long way in life. Um... She's an exciting. She's an fighter. exciting fighter. I mean, there's, there's I mean, there's enough there, there that should be able should to, be able to galvanize, galvanize at least a portion of the, of the casual fan base to want to see her fight. And the UFC is taking very little step to do that, and they did the same thing with Michelle Waterson, basically upon beating Paige Van Zandt again. Someone who was not was not going to in any way be as big a star as Paige Van Zandt, but someone who has a little bit of star quotient to them. And even Mickey Gall in the St. Northcutt fight, kind of a similar deal. Like there are things there that are being completely ignored in the interests of. Like a handful, a handful of, select of select stars, and the problem the problem in, in combat sports as a whole, be that, be that boxing, boxing, kickboxing, MMA, MMA or grappling, is, grappling that is that what happens when those, what happens when those people lose? lose? And you haven't been and paying, you haven't been paying any attention to the people that beat them. You're not capitalizing, You're not capitalizing on any ability to make a start of that. I mean, to use a, a pro wrestling, a pro wrestling analogy, analogy to a certain extent, I know, extent. I know people hate it. There's a lot of there's a lot of similarities in terms of making. You care about you fighter, care about a fighter is making you wrestler. care about a wrestler. The actual fights themselves, themselves are, not are not similar. Obviously, obviously, because pro wrestling is predetermined. Pro wrestling is you know is controlled. Is MMA is not. Is MMA can be derailed very quickly. MMA, MMA is real. Wrestling is, wrestling is fake. Fake to use a, 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 a simplified term. Um, um, you know, but you know, but the the point, the, is, the point is, is that when someone goes over in wrestling, the idea is you make a star off of another star, and in MMA, we used to do we that. Used to do that. We, really we really did. When you think about it, most people started, started to care about Rich Franklin, Franklin when he beat Shamrock. Ken Shamrock. Um, the um, Tito Chuck feud. feud. It got Chuck over as a massive, a massive hero to a certain extent. Even the Randy, even the Randy Chuck stuff. Shamrock and Tito later on, and earlier on. Um, we, used to we used to understand this, that you had to make us care about both, sides, both of sides of the fight, and, and it's, it's, it's been a, been a pretty, pretty abject failure, abject failure uh, lately, uh, lately in this regard, regard. and this one-sided one promotion is going to hurt, going a, lot to hurt a lot long term. And there's that, there's that number three is, number three is to a certain extent related, and this is more on the, on the fighter is, end. Is there's been a rise? There's been a rise in. I mean, it's, it's always been there, but there's been a rise in, in trash talk of a style that I think hurts you long term. Now maybe this now maybe this builds up a fight in the short term. Maybe it does. Um, it doesn't to me, so I can't say that it does. But I mean, if you want to throw in the comments that it does to you, uh, feel free. I'm, I'm, I'm open to you. this one. I'm open on particularly open on discussion because I mean it's it's a bit tricky. But but Concept the concept of, of, trash, of, of trash, right trash talk right now has been to to belittle, to your, belittle opponents your opponent's achievements, achievements um, um, and, how and how good of a fighter they are. Give you an example. Give you an example. Uh, most recently, uh, most recently we had Garbrand. Cody Garbrandt put up a fantastic display last, last night, and, and really made me a lot made me a lot more, more hopeful for his future. For his future. But we had him but we had him talking about how Dominic Champ, Champ, Champ hasn't anybody, fought anybody, etc. Et ignoring the fact, ignoring the fact that one, it's, it's ten anyone with half a brain, brain factually not true, true, just because I mean he's beaten he's beaten most of your coaches, guys that you claim are are your idols. So he's clearly he's clearly beaten some people. He's clearly, you know, he's clearly, he's you know, he's not a paper champion. I mean, that's the most established champion because you could argue TJ Dillashaw beat him, and a lot of people do. So maybe there's that, but still, I mean, still, I mean, we're talking about a man, we're talking about a man who's, you know, he's one of the more one of the more established champions in the UFC, and and, and you're basically him calling him a bum. So when you beat so when a bum, you beat a bum, what does that do for you? What does that do for you? More importantly, more importantly, you're beaten by you're beaten by a bum. What does that do for you? What does that do for you? I'm not saying dumb, not saying dumb trash, trash talk. No, 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 hardly. No, like, there's a way. Like, of there's a way of trash talking where you don't, you don't, 
you don't you don't take down, take the, down the credibility of your win or your loss, or your loss based on your based own, based on your own words. words. Let's go. Let's, let's go, go fight to a fight that hasn't happened already. Hasn't been booked. Hasn't been booked to my knowledge. Has been has Ferguson been, been booked yet? Has that happened? Has that happened? Like people, they're talking about they're talking about wanting, wanting, about wanting to do it, but they're just not doing they're just it. Not doing it. I think probably because Ferguson and the UFC and the UFC really aren't on great terms right now. Um. But there's Tony, but there's fans, Tony and there's fans, fans and there's also Tony himself, uh, Tony himself in an interview. I have, not, I have not heard this interview, heard this interview um, um, but it's been, but referenced, it's been referenced a number of places to the point where I believe there's some credibility to the statement that, that he was talking about, was talking about Habib, Habib Nurmagomedov having a padded record being an undefeated, and being an undefeated fighter, fighter with his padded record hasn't really beaten anyone. One, one, one look at their records. Look at their records for a moment. For a moment. Their biggest win. Their biggest win is the same win. Rafael dos Anjos. Some of their other some of their other big wins are the same wins. Abel Trujillo. There were more. I had, I had they more. Broke I like, broke it down to their top five, five wins, wins, and almost like three of them. Were three like of them were like the same. The same win. win. And then like their and then like their top win, like, like their top wins the same, and then the number two wins are similar. Pretty similar in in Michael Johnson. Michael Johnson for Habib and Edson Barboza for Ferguson. Um, like. Like there was a there was a tremendous similarity between the quality of their opposition. Yes, Habib had cans early in his career. Tony had cans cans early in his career. Um, I think that's the nature. The nature of combat sports is that the beginning of your career is littered with cans and regional fighters. Guys who guys who either didn't pan out or or became journeymen or became outright cans. Um. That's the nature. That's the nature of the game. Of the game. Uh, so, so by going on by about, going on about padded records, record, makes you look closer at Ferguson's record, seeing how, seeing how okay, well, well, if his is padded, yours is also padded. Um, um, in that regard, in that regard, because he's beaten a lot of the same guys again, and in fact, Habib has a win, over, has a win over a guy who's beaten Tony Michael Ferguson, Johnson. Michael Johnson. Yes, he was. Yes, he was injured during that fight, but still, still, it's there. It's there. And you kind and of devalue, kind of devalue it. Like if Ferguson loses, loses to Habib now, he lost to a guy with a padded record. If Ferguson if beats Ferguson Habib, beats Habib, be a guy with a padded record. With a padded record. How, does do How does that do? How does that do anything for either of them? Long term. Long term. You know. You know. Again, to go again, to, to, go to a pro wrestling analogy, you can find a story, find told, a story by told by Chris Jericho, Jericho a, professional, a wrestler, professional wrestler, about a lesson about a lesson he learned in trash talk. He went out there. He went out there in Winnipeg and trash talked an older wrestler, calling him calling him old and so on. The guy took him. The guy took him. Took him. Took him. You know, backstage to the side and said, "Why did you? Why did you do that? Now, now." Crowd thinks I'm. Crowd old. thinks I'm old. Crowd thinks I'm broken. Crowd thinks I'm broken down. down. When I beat you, when I beat you, I will beat you. I will beat you. We'll get my win. We'll back. get my win back. What is that going to do? What is that going to do for you? Same thing here. Same thing here. You can trash. You talk can trash talk without without reducing, reducing the, credibility the credibility of an opponent. And I think long. And I think long term, that's something. That's something that probably needs to happen, because because. This idea, this idea of like the UFC, UFC can get big, 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 big stars. What happens when those, happens stars, when those stars go away? Because we don't have we don't have a history of being able to create stars. Really don't. We really don't. We have our we have our Ronda Rouseys, our Conor McGregor's, our I mean, I guess you can throw like a Chuck Liddell or a Matt Hughes, GSP regionally speaking, maybe a BJ Penn. But when you consider this, there are divisions that have never had these stars. There are there are long time UFC champions who. Uh, never, uh, achieved never achieved that level of credibility uh, with, mainstream uh, with mainstream masses. masses. So to rely, so to rely on, those on those individuals to safeguard, to safeguard kind of the ability of the sport, of the sport probably, isn't probably isn't a great plan. plan. At least until you can, learn, until how you can learn how to create them. Until then, until then you know, it's not, you great, know, it's money not great money to put on, put on good fights, on good fights with people about. that we don't care about. But it's something. But it's something. Keeps relevance. Keeps relevance. And if you put, and money, if you put money behind trying to promote, trying to promote those, fighters, those fighters, maybe you can maybe make, you the, can make the casual masses care. care about them. I don't know if you can. I don't know if you can. But, but you know, that's probably, you know, that's probably the best option available. available. So, so 2017, 2017 it looks bleak, it looks bleak regards, in some regards. Some massive, you know, some massive loans, loans for the UFC to finance. To and, and two of their biggest, their biggest stars are probably not going to fight for a particular large, large amount. Uh, I think Ronda Rousey, Rousey may not fight at all. I think McGregor, Conor McGregor. Conor McGregor, Conor McGregor realizes, realizes his power. He's exercising, he's exercising it, and that is that is all the more power to him. Like to be clear, to be clear uh, whenever, I, whenever I say anything, anything on Conor McGregor, Ronda Rousey, it's, it's not about how Conor is doing it wrong. No, he's doing he's doing exactly what he's supposed to do. Sometimes the promoter. 
has really kind, has of, really failed kind of failed, to though, to create an environment that's going to thrive, thrive long-term. Let's not even talk, not even talk about the fighters, association fighters Association things that are going on, going on right now. And at this point, at this point um, um, I was kind of sticking, kind of stick a pin in that. Where is it going? Where is it going? Don't know. Maybe 2017 will tell us. We'll see. We'll see. Have a good New Year. Have a good New Year. Uh, enjoy uh, enjoy it. it. Try not to, Try not uh, to uh, completely, completely brain, brain drunk yourself, yourself on New Year's Eve. New Year's Eve. And uh, <laughs> I will see. I will you see you in 2017. In 2017.